Hi, my name is Mike Eisenson. I'm a principal engineer at Criari LLC. And I'd like to talk to you about our technology that we're developing for the Navy to enable cryogenic cooling for superconducting minesweepers. I'd first like to uh, give you a little bit of background on Criari's mission and capabilities. Criari means to create, and our mission is to create value for our clients. We help them solve their most difficult problems by innovating to create new technologies, working with our clients to integrate those technologies into their products, processes, and systems, and then transition those technologies into key products or programs. Our core expertise is in thermal and fluid engineering and technology innovation. We work in both hardware and software development, and we have particular expertise developing innovative fabrication and manufacturing processes, and applying those innovative processes to develop new technology for thermal and fluid engineering. Our customers include, of course, the Navy, all the DOD branches, as well as NASA, the Department of Energy, and NIH. The photos on this page illustrate some of Criari's uh, more significant transition successes. The upper left-hand photo shows a cryogenic cooler that we developed for NASA that was installed on the Hubble Space Telescope. The basic technology in this cooler is the same cryogenic cooling technology that we're currently working uh, to uh, apply to the superconducting mine sweeping application. We've also developed cryogenic machining technology illustrated in the upper right. This is for rapid machining of titanium parts for aircraft manufacture. This, te this technology was licensed to one of the leading uh, manufacturers of machine tools. We've developed in the lower left uh, non-contact metrology. This is a handheld laser scanning device developed under SBIR funding that is now in use on the uh, F-35 production line. And finally, on the lower right, uh, we developed for the Navy a compact swaging machine that's currently being manufactured and delivered to all the fleets in the U.S., uh, all, all the carriers in the U.S. fleet. Uh, the purpose of the compact swaging machine is to uh, make more efficient the maintenance of uh, the uh, arresting cables that are used for aircraft retrieval. Let me give a little bit of background that uh, provides some context for this project. Um, what we're trying to do is enable the use of superconducting systems on uh, unmanned surface vehicles, USVs. In particular, we'd like to apply superconductivity to mine sweeping USVs that are launched from littoral combat ships. In particular, we want to enable the use of superconducting magnets that can enhance mine sweeping capabilities. However, there are some significant technical challenges to using superconducting systems on USVs. The superconducting magnets require large amounts of refrigeration, hundreds of watts, at temperatures that are lower than minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. To do that, we need ultra-low temperature refrigerators, and uh, developing those refrigerators is one of Criari's specialties. Our technology for doing this we call Turbo Brayton cryocoolers. It's the same uh, cryocooler technology that was used on the Hubble Space Telescope, but scaled up to enable the large amounts of cooling needed for the superconducting magnets. Turbo Brayton technology is uh, ideal for these systems because it, a Turbo Brayton cooler comprises separate systems that are linked by a loop of circulating refrigerant, so it can pick up cryogenic heat loads uh, at a number of different locations uh, scattered around the system. And uh, the recuperator is a key component in the Turbo Brayton cycle. It turns out that it's the largest component in high capacity systems, and so so making a compact cryocooler for USVs uh, is critically dependent on being able to manufacture a compact recuperator. The schematic on this slide illustrates how the recuperator fits into the turbo Brayton cryocooler. Uh, at the top end is the compressor. That's the triangle with the C in it that produces uh, warm high-pressure gas at point one. That high-pressure gas flows into the, heat, the recuperator. That's the heat exchanger in the middle of the schematic. It cools off and leaves at point two. It's almost cold enough there to cool the magnet, but not quite. Uh, that gas then flows through the expander, expands to low pressure, cools off even more, and now it's cold enough to pick up heat loads from the magnet. It then flows back into the recuperator at point four, uh, warms up and exits the recuperator at point five, and then flows back to the compressor to redo the cycle. The uh, recuperative heat exchanger um, has to accomplish some, some pretty challenging uh, uh, technical goals to make the cycle work. The thermal efficiency needs to be more than 99%. Uh, 
Uh, the pressure losses, uh, the fractional pressure losses for both sides need to add up to less than 8%. And of course, it needs to be uh, compact and lightweight to fit inside the limited space available on the USVs. We've looked at state-of-the-art heat exchanger technology for manufacturing these recuperators, and it is not suitable because the heat exchangers turn out to be much too large. Uh, on this slide is illustrated the comparison between a state-of-the-art aluminum plate fin recuperator and Criari's technology that we are developing in this program. The aluminum plate fin heat exchanger uh, turns out to be about 340 inches long by 12 by 8 inches in cross-section, so it's a very large and awkward shape and uh, not really feasible to incorporate this kind of, of device in a cryo cooler on a USB. If we can apply Criari's technology, which is a dimpled foil microchannel recuperator, we have the potential to reduce the size by an order of magnitude or more. We predict an overall length of about 15 inches and a 5 by 5 inch by uh, roughly 2 inch cross-section. Now it's much more feasible to incorporate the cryo cooler into the, into the USB. The dimpled foil recuperator is based on a technology that Criari has been uh, developing for several years with prior applications focused on small gas turbine engines, typically in the power range 10 to 1500 horsepower. This technology enables us to produce microchannel foil recuperators using an innovative manufacturing process that we call hybrid additive manufacturing. We build up these heat exchangers layer by layer. Hybrid addi additive manufacturing lets us uh, build these heat exchangers from commercial well-known materials. It lets us uh, produce cores with very uniform arrays of microchannels for high performance. Because these microchannels enable us to produce a, a very high uh, uh, surface area density in the heat exchanger core, they can be very compact. It gives us a lot of flexibility in the shape and form factor of the heat exchangers so they can fit into uh, and integrate with systems with, with uh, unusual sizes and shapes. We can build these heat exchangers in a modular fashion and they're very scalable. We've developed innovative sealing technology that is very durable and uh, 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 resistant to thermomechanical stress. The photos on this slide illustrate two examples of microchannel foil recuperators that we've developed for high temperature applications. On the top, you see five modules of Inconel 625 cross-flow heat exchanger that we're developing for a 700 horsepower helicopter engine. These heat exchangers have uh, built-in sealing features so you can stack them up like Legos and press them together to build the complete core. Those units have been uh, tested in a full-scale engine test and demonstrated excellent performance and, uh, and durability. On the bottom is a uh, counterflow Inconel 625 recuperator that we're developing for a 50 horsepower gas turbine. This unit's also module, modular, but the modules are uh, uh, sections, radial sections of the uh, annular shape. And as you can see, it, it's built with a very unusual shape for a heat exchanger, but it integrates very compactly with the gas turbine engine. Some of the key elements of this technology have already been demonstrated. And in this phase two, uh, what we're doing is uh, extending the technology from gas turbine engines to turbo Brayton cryo coolers. Our hybrid additive manufacturing process has been proven out uh, many times. Uh, that includes both pre precision production of the heat exchanger plates and uh, assembly of the microchannel cores using an automated welding approach. The seals have been demonstrated uh, to be effective and highly durable in high temperature applications. And the heat exchanger performance uh, has been measured to, uh, to match our design predictions and show that we can achieve high performance, both for high thermal effectiveness, low pressure loss, and good flow distribution. The features of our compact recuperator um, will enable the cryogenic cooling cycle to achieve uh, some significant advantages compared to other technologies, which will lead to um, significant benefits for the end user. The microchannel heat exchanger core enables high thermal effectiveness, high cycle efficiency, and provides very high internal surface area. To the end user, this means high cooling power for low input power from a system that's compact and lightweight. The hybrid additive manufacturing approach allows us to use commercial materials with well-known properties uh, and, and build the core up using some well-established manufacturing processes, 
which means low cost for the end user. And finally, our innovative sealing technology results in low thermal mechanical stress for high reliability and enables modular construction to uh, uh, enable good scalability as well as ease of maintenance. The first step in transitioning this technology to the fleet will be to uh, complete the ongoing SBIR Phase II project. As part of that project, we have an upcoming uh, test of the first generation recuperator this year. Uh, the, the goal of that test is to demonstrate high performance and good agreement with our design models. Following that will be a uh, redesign and test of a second generation recuperator next year. The goal of that second generation recuperator is to incorporate lessons learned from the Gen 1 recuperator and also demonstrate uh, the capability of achieving high performance in a very compact heat exchanger. Uh, following uh, those two recuperator tests will come an option phase where we'll take the uh, recuperator and integrate it with a cryogenic cooler. Uh, the goal of that will to be to demonstrate uh, uh, operation of a complete turbo Brayton uh, cryocooling cycle that can produce high cooling power at low temperature, with low power input, and uh, compact components. Following the SPIR, we would expect that the next steps would be to integrate that cryo cooler with a superconducting magnet and demonstrate operation on an unmanned surface vehicle in the FY24 25 timeframe, followed by transition to the fleet in FY25 and 26. The primary transition advocate uh, for this technology is PEO USC, that's unmanned and small combatants, within uh, PMS 420, which uh, is LC, littoral combat ship mission modules. The technology that we're developing under this SBIR project has applications that, uh, that go beyond uh, superconducting minesweepers, including power systems, and compact heat exchangers, and additional applications beyond that. Uh, superconducting power systems, including generators and power distribution systems, have applications in the Navy and in uh, commercial power generation. Compact heat exchangers can be used not only in small gas turbines, but also in larger uh, uh, engines and aircraft, both as fan duct heat exchangers in large engines and compact heat exchangers for aircraft thermal management. In addition, we're exploring uh, applications in spacecraft thermal control and uh, using this technology to build contactors for various mass transfer op operations like water harvesting and uh, capture of CO2. Like I mentioned before, uh, transition of this technology is going to begin with um, integration of the cryogenic cooler with a superconducting magnet, and then uh, uh, test that system on board, an, uh, on board a small USV. To do that, we'll need to uh, work with a team, including PEO USC, PMS 420, a uh, USV prime contractor, and an HTS magnet manufacturer. So if, if you are uh, uh, a USV prime, or uh, a representative of an HTS magnet manufacturer, uh, please uh, stop by our booth and uh, chat with us. We would love to uh, discuss further how to work together to transition this technology. The, the actual team that's going to uh, produce this product will consist of Criari and our sister company, Idari LLC. Idari is a Criari affiliate that was established in 2010 to manufacture highly engineered products for critical DOD applications based on technology that was developed at Criari. Uh, Criari and Adari have successfully teamed uh, on several similar types of products in the past, including the fastener measurement tool I mentioned before and uh, the compact swaging machine. Uh, the photo on this page shows several of the compact swaging machines uh, currently being assembled at Adari uh, for delivery to the fleet. We expect that the cryogenic cooler with the compact recuperator uh, would be manufactured at Adari in a similar way. So please stop by the Criari virtual booth. Uh, you can chat with me or my colleague, Darren Knaus. Um, we'd love to tell you more about Criari and our heat exchanger technology. We can show you some samples over the internet and talk about um, how to transition this technology into uh, your product or system. Thanks very much for listening.